Well, good morning, everyone. <clears throat> we have about a minute before we get started. Uh, we have a very special presentation this morning. We thank God that we're able to be here and be in the presence of God. We have a few announcements that I'll make as we move forward. Y'all looking full over there. Good morning, choir. Uh, yesterday, we were with uh, Sister Brown, and she had a 100th anniversary. Oh, she had a 100th birthday. And, uh, and we'll talk about that a little bit later because we have another surprise for you next Sunday. It's good to see the scouts and the girls and the scouts and the brownies. In the middle of all this pandemic, y'all have hung in there. And I certainly do appreciate everything that you've been doing with all these young men and these young ladies and these children. Amen? So we do appreciate all that you do. For this is the day that the Lord has made. And even if you don't want to rejoice and be glad in it, I shall rejoice and I shall be glad in it. He woke me up. There's some people didn't get up this morning. There's sickness everywhere all around us. If it isn't one thing, there's something else. But God is still holding on to us and we're still holding on to God. So we come to lift up the name of Jesus. We come to, you can worship him sitting there, but to really show him you appreciate him, you got to praise him. Come on, give him a hand praise. You got to be boisterous with him and say, Lord, I thank you of your goodness and your mercy. You ought to be able to get on your feet and say, Lord, we love you for what you've been doing, how you kept us in spite of what's going on in this world. Well, I do love it. Come on, choir, and lift us up. Yeah, Lord. everyone would stand in the building. Come on, we're just going to lift our hands and worship. The same God that died on the cross for us is here in our hearts. Amen.
God, because you're looking at one was on a almost deathbed this week, Lord, but I, I thank you, hallelujah, that you brought me up out of it, dear God, miraculously, Lord. I glorify you, God, but I'm not the only one that stepped foot in the church today, God, looking for a miracle, looking for an answer, God. We ask you to keep on dwelling with us throughout this service, and not only this service, God, but throughout the week, throughout the month, throughout the year, dear God. We thank you right now, God. We thank you for Mother Brown reaching 100 years old yesterday, God. We thank you right now, God. Oh, hallelujah. There's many right now that wish to be in the house but can't be in the house for whatever reason. And God, we just ask you to visit their homes and visit the nursing homes and the hospitals, dear God. And we ask you, dear God, there's anybody ailing in their body today that walked in the house. Just because you walked in here, you're going to get your miracle. You're going to get your healing, God. Do the word of God. We just claim it today. Oh, hallelujah. I'm trying to calm down. Oh, but I thank you right now. We just ask you to come on in, continue to dwell with us. Come on in the room. Oh, I was listening to that on the way coming to church. Come on in the room. Come on in the room. God, I got to close the door, God. I need you to come on in the room. Oh, hallelujah. And God, we say thank you. We say thank you for the men and women of God. We thank you for our pastor. God, we thank you for his, his diligence, God. We ask you to bless him today as he speaks the word, God. Let it penetrate our hearts. And, Lord, let it follow us throughout the week, dear God, until we can come back again. And, Lord, I thank you. I just thank you again for healing, for your healing power and for your healing mercy because you didn't have to do it. You didn't have to do it, but you did. Oh, God, we're going to say thank you. Oh, glory to God. Lord, I thank you right now in Jesus' name. As we can turn to the east and we're going to lift our hands to the Holy God. Oh, and love on him right now. As you lift your hands, think about what he's done for you. Think about how he's brought you out. Sing that song like you've sang it for the last time. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. That's right. That's right. Hallelujah. Sing it from your hearts. Show them your love. And show them your love. And love on him right now. Glory. Yes, yes, yes. That's it. That's it. That's it. Glory to God. Oh, hallelujah. Lift your voices. Lift your voices to him. Oh, hallelujah. God, all right. Look across the house and tell your neighbors good morning. Ah, tell them good morning. We were so full of praise and so full of worship. I, I, I don't want. Oh Lord, I, I think about that song. You know my, you know my name. Lord, have mercy. And I'm glad He know my name. I really appreciate it. Really appreciate the fact that He knows my name and I, I appreciate the fact that he talks with me that he walks with me and he tell me I am his own have I got a witness in here aren't you glad about that aren't you glad about that I looked over there and the minister music was over here and I was getting ready to go well, I'll catch him next time. You know my... I was gone, son. 
I was, I was getting ready to go. But, but uh, we, uh, as a matter of fact, I don't really need the musicians to do that. I can do it. I don't need y'all. I to be honest with y'all. I, I, man, I can praise them all by saying, all I've been through, man. I remember the days they didn't have no music <laughs> in the church. We had those scrub boards. Y'all don't know what I'm talking about. I know. But anyway, uh, we have, uh, I'll have a few announcements and then we're going to go from there. Uh, next Sunday, on the fifth Sunday, uh, Sister Brown and Sister Henrietta Wolf will be here with us. Sister Wolf's birthday is January the 11th, 2021. So she was 101 this month. And Sister Brown is January uh, 22nd, 1922. So we're going to celebrate them both here next week. They will be in the Florida Star this coming week. I will send a news uh, 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 a press release on them this week. The news people will probably be here to talk with them. I'll probably put them in the lobby. Uh, they could tell you some stories. I know for sure that in, in 1922 when Mother Brown and, 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 uh, was, was born and when the Mother Henrietta Wolf was a year old, gas was only 25 cents a gallon. You could buy a house for $5,400. So I'm just trying to, nothing like that now. But it, it, that's what it was back in the day. And, uh, and, and they used to call them uh, Tutti Fruities. You were beautiful. Y'all will catch that later. <laughs> but we want to do that next week. Uh, this, this, this coming week, I have the sad, I have the sad um, duty, I call it, to, to announce that we have... Uh, Two home going services that that we got to deal with. One is this 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 Tuesday. Uh, the family viewing will be four to six tomorrow at T. S. Warden. Uh, Brother Willie Kimbrough's son Alfred, uh, the nephew of uh, brother and sister Walter Kimbrough, Alfred has passed, and his home going service is going to be Tuesday at 10 a.m. at T.S. Warden. So uh, I'll, I'll be there to, to, to do that. And then we lost Brother Arthur Davis. Uh, Brother Davis hadn't been to church in a long time. He couldn't walk, really. He's so messed up, but he messed around and got that COVID. And uh, there's a story behind that, not for the day, but he got COVID and he just didn't, couldn't make it. So before yesterday he passed so I'm looking for the family to get back to me we'll find out when that could happen and lift his daughter up and uh, his daughter is uh, she can't walk right now her knees are so bad and and then her uh, his grandson married to my niece and my niece was rushed to the hospital she uh, couldn't breathe so I'm asking you to Nikki y'all know Nikki married married Edward uh, that was here she's been rushed she's been having problems for a long time but they rushed her to the hospital. She don't have COVID, thank God, but, you know, she got these lung problems. And so I would ask that you would lift her up in prayer today when we go to the altar uh, to intercede. Uh, those are the announcements that I have for today. And then now I want to, we have some special presentations. We're going to take time to do this. We're going to start out with the uh, Browners and Girl Scouts. Uh, I want you to come and present them, do what we're going to do. And then after that, we have the Cub Scouts and the Boy Scouts. Is that Sister Janie Hopper sitting over there? Look at her. <laughs> All righty. I don't think many of you knew that we were, they were doing the Brownie and the Girl Scouts. Let me spray this for you.
Welcome to Girl Scout Troop 72011 badge ceremony. These patches are a symbol of various activities which each girl has participated in. As a Girl Scout, we are honored to support our community and each other. Please join us in celebrating our team accomplishment. Fight Hunger. To earn this badge, troop members create care packages for our local homeless population. Diversity. This badge earned by having a diverse troop. First cookie sale. This badge is earned the first time a troop member sells cookies. Cookie Boss. Scout sold 1,500 boxes of cookies. Br Bridge to Brownies. This patch is Daisy's beginning their quest as a bounty. Norby Wetzel, come up. your diversity patch and your first cookie sale patch. Congratulations. <laughs> Miracle Danielle, come up. your first cookie sale badge, your fight hunger badge, and diversity badge. Congratulations. Clark, come up. You have earned your Cookie Boss badge, your Fight Hunger badge, Bridge to Brownie, and your Diversity badge. Congratulations. Morgan Clark, you have earned your Fight Hunger badge, your Cookie Boss badge, and your Diversity badge. Congratulations. <laughs> You're a goal greeter. Oh, getter. Morgan, congratulations. Uh, thank you for um, watching and, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, uh, participating, <laughs> sorry, and uh, attending today. Thank you. Cookies, cookies will come on sale on um, J Fe Fe February the 5th, and you can get your cookies uh, from Million at church. Put 
that in the paper, do we? All right. Now we have the Cub Scouts and the Boy Scouts. And let me, uh, let me, I, I can't, nothing I've done except I authorized it to be here. Uh, and when they started this mess about girls going out to the Boy Scouts and all that, I said, not in, not in our watch, not at our church. Uh, I'm not having girls going camping with the Boy Scouts. Y'all do that somewhere else. And I meant that. But uh, the, uh, Mr. Hopper, stand up. do this while I can, because I may not be here tomorrow. There have been some peaks and valleys, but I'm telling you, you're a good man. You're a great man. And I'm grateful for what you've done. I've seen you, a minimum of at least three of these boys that's gone through this troop here at this church have made Eagle Scouts. You don't do that easily. So I want to I commend you for being the leader and, and dealing with it and, and working through it and Thank you for everything that you've done. Uh, and and the, a lot of the things that you've probably done are said to these boys they won't appreciate until they get grown. But it'll come back to them and it'll be reminded. Uh, Brother uh, Dumas, please stand up. I want to thank you for stepping in and helping out the way you've helped out with the Cub Scouts and the Boy Scouts and everything you've done. And I'm very proud. There is another person who's not here right now, Pastor McCullough. You know, he's he stepped up and stepped in to help out with this troop and what we were trying to do, and I'm really happy. And the last person that I really want to stand also is this young lady who's always at the door when you get there, Sister Wilson. She 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 has been the peacemaker. Her neogram is a nine. And uh, I'm coming, I'm coming to you. Yeah, I'm coming, I'm coming. Her neogram is a nine, and I really want to thank you for, for, for doing that and being the peacemaker. Because, boy, there's been some days they call me, and I'm pulling my own hair out. But I mean, and I don't have any, y'all got me? So, if, madam, please stand. Miss Mews? Yeah. She's the one. She's the one that said, "Baby, it's gonna be all right." You gotta. <laughs> you always gotta have that one in there. It, it ain't that bad. We gonna get through it, okay? And uh, the only person that I wish was here, and I've been trying to get back to him, but he's been working and everything else. And that's TJ. TJ started out with us, and I was looking forward to TJ going to West Point and all of that. But Harris, I'm looking for you to become an Eagle Scout. Whoever else going to be an Eagle Scout with you, I'm looking for you to go to West Point. Who else with? I'm going to let y'all work through that then. But, 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 but I'm looking for y'all to become Eagle Scouts. And you know, if you become an Eagle Scout, you can sign your way into West Point and go to school and get a free education for nothing. You hear what I'm saying? All you got to do is get a letter from Congress and you go. Bear with us. We are, you know, this is this is worthy to uh, of the time that we have. Let's pray the mic, please. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Good morning, church. I would like to open this morning's. Oh, I would like to open this morning's ceremony by welcoming our scout families and invited guests to our Truth Six Twenty Two Court of Honor. Our scouts have continued to work hard and earn the awards that they will be presented today. We have over 45 merit badges that we finna give our scouts out today. And we don't have that much time, so we just finna get straight to the point. <laughs> First, we have Jamal with his Life Scout merit badge. And, and his swimming mare badge. Next we have Caleb 
what, 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 what's this? With his traffic safety merit badge and his, and his nature merit badge. Next, we have Malachi Walford with his traffic safety fingerprinting. And Indian, Indian Lorch? I didn't know that was a mayor badge. <laughs> Next, we have Marcus Clark with his scout mayor badge. Next, we have Jacoby Sanford with, an, with Animal Science Law, Veterinarian Medicine, Art, and Fingerprinting. Okay, he's not here today with us. Next, we have Chadarius Mobley, who has this scout merit badge, swimming, chess, archery, pioneering, art, fingerprinting, pulp and paper, and pottery merit badges. <laughs> He's not here with us today either. Next, we have Travion Mobley, who has chess, swimming, pioneering, art, nature, and his tenderfoot merit badges. He's not, he's not here with us today either. Next, we have Michael Daniels with his safety merit badge. Next, we have Jamani Benoit with his cookie merit badge, his comp competent materials merit badge, and his Star Scout merit badge. <laughs> Next, we have Kenyan Peoples with his Tenderfoot. Kayak, no, paddle boarding, leather work, kayaking, canoeing, and his totem ship, merit badges. He's not, with, he's not here with us today either. And then we have Ronald Harris with his swimming merit badge. <laughs> First class scout, his pioneering merit badge, public speaking, and star scout. Oh, and Miss Mew. We would like to present you the Assistant Scout Patch. <laughs> Assistant Scout Master.
Y'all ready? All right, scout oath. Be prepared. Oh, oh my honor, I'll do my best. Before we bring this court honor to close, I would like to thank everyone for coming this morning to the committee members for their assistance and to all the leaders, parents, and scouts who combined to help True Sister into the quality unit that it is. Thank you. Father, we come now with our heads about our hearts as are humble. We come before you with a mouth full of praises because we adore you, we magnify your name. We come to before you uh, as bad children before a good father. We come realizing that the ground that we are approaching, the ground that we will place our petitions on, are holy ground. So therefore, before we petition you for anything, I want to give each and every one of us a moment, God, and to include myself and ask you to, as we say to you, we have been sinners. We have fallen short. We have made mistakes. Said something we shouldn't have said, been some places we should have not gone. Done some things we should have not done. But I want to ask you to forgive us for our sins and I'm asking you to do what you said that if we confess our sins that you would take our sins and toss them in the sea of forgetfulness as far as the east is from the west never to come up again so we lay them before your feet with a bowed head now and a lump of heart We'd ask you, God, to look down upon our families individually and collectively and ask you to put your arm of protection around our families that we may be protected against all these evils in this world and the diseases and sickness that are going on. We need you, God, to come down and, and see about us. We need you to bless our churches individually and collectively and realize that without you, God, we could do nothing. Asking you, God, to look down upon these scouts and these uh, the young ladies, the young men, and bless them and thank you that you've given them a spirit to want to do something positive in their life. But I should have blessed their families, their, their parents, who allowed them to do this and the leaders that they have, that they may continue to be able to lead, guide, and direct them in the way that you would have them to go. And God, in this world in which we live, we, yea, though we walk through the valleys and the shadow of death, we fear no evil. As we go through this day, we realize that you are still our light and our salvation, so whom shall we fear? 
You've been good to us, God. You've been better to us than we've been to ourselves. And we know that you've been with us, Lord. And therefore, we will not be afraid of COVID-19. We will be cautious. We'll be faithful. But, but God, we no need to fear if we do the things that you set before us to do to protect ourselves. And God, we do not let our hearts trouble because we know that you're with us, so there's no need to be afraid. Now, God, I want to be a little selfish for a moment. I got a niece in that hospital who's been struggling for, with her lungs for a minute now. Prayed last night, and I'm praying again this morning. Asking you to stop by her bedside, put your finger of love on in your hand of mercy, and lift up off of that bed of affliction. We have two families who are bereaved right now, the Kimbrough family and, and the Davis family, God, but you, 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 you still are God, and because, and because of that, God, you all we have to hold on to. And we'll make it through, and we'll understand it all better by and by. But for right now, God, we need you to come see about all of us. And we're asking you, God, to bless us individually and collectively. We're asking you, God, to keep food on our table. We're asking you, God, to keep clothes on our back. We're asking you, God, to keep a roof over our head. And now, Lord, now, Lord, we don't know what tomorrow may bring, but we are certain that you hold us in the palm of your hand. Now, Lord, now, Lord, we have a government uh, that's full of confusion. So we pray that you would touch their minds and guide their decisions. Now, Lord, we have young people uh, shooting and killing one another. And God, if they come to know Jesus and the pardon of their sins, all that kin killing can will certainly go away. Now, Lord, now, Lord, somebody is sick and somebody is troubled. But if you be so kind, to go and see about them as well. Somebody's mind is racing. Somebody's heart is troubled. Somebody's body is afflicted with pain. But you are still a bomb in Gilead. You are still a physician in the house. So now, Lord, now, Lord, I just want to say thank you for waking us up this morning. I want to say thank you for keeping us clothed in our right mind. Thank you for looking over our families. Now, Lord, the time's going to come and we won't be able to pray anymore. Won't be able to sing a hymn anymore and won't be able to pray anymore. But I got one more I got one more request, Lord. I got a friend who's facing surgery. I got a friend who has cancer in his neck. I got a friend who has cancer in his bladder. But that's your friend. That's your child. That's your sons. And you can have mercy on them right now. Heal their body. Deliver them from their ailments. And we'll be so careful to say thank you. Thank you. I got a member by the name of Sister Rice. She went in there to have that procedure. She had blood clots all over her lungs. They went in there and they touched the first clock and the rest of them cleared. If you can do it for her, you can do it for us. You can do it for McCullough.
color. You can do it for Paul. You can do it for now, 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 Lord. We thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Just asking for deliverance. Just asking for healing. Just asking for your love. In the name of Jesus. I say in the name, in the name of Jesus, of Jesus. Yes. Amen. 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 amen, amen, and amen. amen.
What's that beat when, when they were saying you are the rhythm king, that beat? Can you go back there one more time? In Greek, hallelujah means all praises to God. In Hebrew, hallelujah means all praises to God. In Arabic, hallelujah means all praises to God. In Russia, hallelujah, all praises to God. In Spanish, hallelujah, all praises to God. And Pastor Gundy has already acknowledged uh, Pastor McCullough uh, with uh, his cancer treatments, right? And I saw a picture on social media, and the picture showed him ringing a bell for that last treatment. So twin, I need you to help me out now, twin, twin. I need you to help me out because we go for the beat to the cymbals. And, 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 
Testing, testing. And, and when I played football, we would do a warm up. When I played basketball, we would do a warm up. When I wrestled in high school, we would do a warm up. Uh, when, when, I, when I was going to a cage, before we got in the cage to fight, we would do a warm up. And, 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 and I believe we should already be warm. So I'm just going to ask just for a little bit of participation. If there's anybody in here who's ever been through something, if you would just lift one hand. And then if God has brought you out, if you will lift the other hand, and if you came out better on the other side, if you would just put both hands to... shall live and not die. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I can't speak for everybody, uh, but, 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 but we would say stuff like uh, God woke us up this morning and uh, 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 Shakira, was that two Sundays ago or was that three Sundays ago with Nikea? Two Sundays ago, uh, a one-year-old, she just would not wake up. She would not wake up. She wouldn't wake up in the morning. She wouldn't wake up in the afternoon. She, Pastor, she wouldn't even wake up at night. So, so we go to the hospital, and they, you know, anybody in here ever got a report, and you said, I, I'm not going to receive that? I just thank God for, I'm not going to receive that anointing. I'm not going to say doctors don't know what they're talking about. I'm not going to say x-rays and CAT scans don't know what they're talking about. But there's certain stuff that I said I just can't receive that. Is that? 
Only if you've been there, you may understand. But if you haven't been there, I pray you don't. But if you get there, I'm just trying to tell you that some stuff, you're just going to have to go back to what God says. They were talking about the baby had a stroke. I said, well, I can't receive that. She had a skull fracture. I said, I can't receive that either. They said, well, it looks like she got pneumonia. I said, I'll take that one. You got to give me something I can work with, because I, I, I can't work with all this other, I'm sorry, but, 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 but like I said, but if you've never been there, you never have to go there, and, and that's okay, but when you've been there, and you've gone there, and you've seen God bring them out on the other side in less than 24 hours, you, you, you don't have to wait for, for the morning, you, you can go ahead and shout now. Uh, I, I just believe that we just can't die in the process. We can't give up in the process. If you have your Bibles, please open them to Ezekiel chapter 37. We're just going to read one verse of scripture. And, and this is where my heart has been for uh, since the beginning of the year. And, and God has been laying this on me is basically, can these bones live again? And, um, and I do want to thank God for our right reverend doctor, the honorable man of God, our pastor, R.L. Gundy. Can we please thank God for our under shepherd? We also thank God for our lovely First Lady. Yes. Yes. Um, and if you would please stand for the reading of the word, and I won't be before you long. Um, Ezekiel chapter 37, uh, verse 3. And just to let you know, God is entitled to ask you questions. Uh, I was told that you don't question God, but James 1 and 5 says that if any man lacks wisdom, let him ask of God who gives to all men or all women or all people freely. So sometimes some of the best learning comes through question and answer. Amen, somebody. Yeah. And Ezekiel chapter 37, and it reads, if we could, I'm reading from the NIV version of the Bible. You can feel free to read it from your version of the Bible. And it says, he asked me, son of man. Can these bones live? I said, Sovereign Lord, you alone know. If you would, please repeat after me in prayer. Lord, Lord have, your way. have your way. In Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen. You all may be seated. Uh, there is a song by Sounds of Blackness uh, called Hold On. And basically, uh, it reads, yesterday a man stepped to me. He said, how can you smile when your world is crumbling down? I said, here's my secret. When I want to cry, I take a look around, and I see that I'm getting by. And I hold on. Change is coming. And... I believe that sometimes it's hard for us to hold on when it seems as if things just keep repeating itself over and over and over again. Um, when we come to our city, uh, one of the things that you may or may not know is that we have the largest population of African Americans out of any other city in the state of Florida. When it comes to our public schools, uh, most of our public schools population is African American. When it comes to the Department of Juvenile Justice, most of those who are involved or incarcerated are African American. When it comes to our Department of Corrections, most of those who are incarcerated are African American. When it comes to infant mortality pertaining to our city, a large portion of those who have died based on infants are African American. Now granted, we do have challenges with our police department, but when you look at the national average of black men who are killed by gun violence, ages 25 and under, the largest portion of that population is African American.
And I believe that those bones can live again if we're willing to allow God to work within us. And we take that spirit that's working in us and we put that work together in our local community. When we look at the Boy Scouts, uh, uh, I'm not sure if you all are aware of this, but there was an African by the name of Shaka Zulu. And a lot of things that Shaka Zulu put in place are things that were also adopted by the Boy Scouts based on his hierarchy of structure. When you look at an Afrocentric growing up, an Afrocentric rites of passage, when you look at these badges and merits, it qualified you for manhood, meaning you are capable to do this. You are capable to lead in this area. Am, am I making sense to anybody? Even when it came to the women, this is your rites of passage because now you are capable of doing this. You are capable, you are competent in doing this. Does that make sense? And when you don't have a rites of passage, you're not endorsed, you're not equipped for whatever the world throws at you. Another thing I want to share with you is that when you look at these different rites of passages, Jesus at the age of 12 says, how is it that you look for me when you know I must be about my father's business? Basically, he was in an area where you would have the most elite of elite when it came to intellect and information. A 12-year-old was able to answer their questions. But educators and scholars and the elders of that time was not able to answer Jesus' questions. So when we look at this and we look at what's going on in our society, I believe we're in the right place at the right time. And if you believe that, can you please give our God a hand clap of praise? The concept of life after death is one thing that um, is kind of new, even for uh, a lot of major religions. And when we look at life after death, in the Old Testament, they would have a place called Sheol. You can find that in Ezekiel chapter 32. Sheol is represented as a great underground area as for a mighty pit. It is a place of darkness which all the dead go, both righteous and unrighteous, according to the Old Testament. How many of you all believe that we're all going to die? And what happens is, in the Old Testament, they would use uh, terms like Hades, Yahana, Lake of Fire, which can also be found in New Testament under Revelations. But there's also a space in the afterlife where people, they wouldn't just say Sheol, but they would say Abraham's bosom. And with Abraham's bosom, it was like this place called paradise. But in order for you to get to paradise, you had to die. You, you, couldn't, you, you couldn't get there until you died. And on the other side of that would be the lake of fire within Sheol, where those who were punished for their actions. But then we have Jesus, because Jesus had not come at this time. He had not died on the cross. So scholars say that when he spent three days in the grave, he was able to be a living testament for those who want to accept him, who are already in Abraham's bosom but he also gave an outlet to those who are already in the lake of fire. So that way in John 10 and 10, for the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Jesus said that I came that they might have life and have it more abundantly. And that life in abundance is not when you die and go to paradise. That life in abundance is not 
when you die and go to heaven. That life in abundance is while you are still here on earth. If you're willing to accept him as Lord and Savior. If you believe that, please give our God a hand clap of praise. See, there's some of us that we have allowed for things that we're challenged with to build, build a coffin to us. And what I, what I mean by that is, is that uh, uh, my grandmother Edna, uh, she made it to 79, 364 days. And uh, basically she transitioned at home with family. Uh, she went to sleep, right? It would be an insult to injury to say that my grandmother Edna died from cancer because she was diagnosed with cancer 20 years earlier. Does that make sense? The doctor said that she was a miracle. Minister Parker, the reason why they said that she was a miracle is not because cancer was not in her body. They called her a miracle because based on the count in the digits, it wasn't in the single digits or the double digits, it was in triple digits. But in triple digits, she was able to take that earthly vessel an additional 20 years. So basically, I would have to say that my grandmother died with cancer. Not necessarily saying she died from cancer. So if people say, well, when did she die or what did she die from? She died when she got good and ready. <laughs> Y'all picking up what I'm putting down. So what happens is, is that some of us, we be miserable, and then we die miserable. Some of us, we be depressed, and then we die depressed. Some of us, we be frustrated, and then we die frustrated. But is there anybody in here who says, listen, I may get down, but I'm not out. There is a resurrecting spirit inside of me called Jesus. And by his stripes, I'm healed. My worship, my praise, my dedication when it comes to God is not predicated on how I feel. Is there anybody in here who says, listen, it, it ain't that I felt like coming to church today. It ain't like I felt like leaving the house today. But what happens when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, my soul begin to cry out, ha, 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 ha. Give my God some praise in this place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Depression got to die today. I see you tomorrow. Doubt got to die today, but I see you tomorrow. Because you got to understand, Jesus was tempted. He beat Satan, and then what he said? He said he'll be back. He'll be back. He'll be back in another season. But, 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 but this is your season to win. Yeah, yeah, th this is your season to win. Uh, 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 and Pastor Gundy, I, I, I got to give you another, what do you call it when you agree? Um, I'm just going to have to concur with you again about uh, Mr. Harper. I saw Mr. Harper at city council. And, and, and Mr. Harper had those Boy Scouts at city council sitting down taking notes. This is how local government is done. When, when you see your roads and then you see everybody else's roads and you wonder why the roads in the black community don't match the roads in everybody else's community, it's because we don't show up at these meetings. You wonder, you wonder why we're fighting over a couple thousand dollars in the black community, but they got millions and millions of dollars going on the south bank of the river, uh, uh, it's because we don't show up to these meetings. But I need you to sit through these meetings. I need you to learn what's going on. I need you to pay attention to the finance committee. I need you to pay attention to the rules committee. I need you to pay attention to what's going on with the gas tax. God dog, Mr. Harper, I owe you a, this is for you. That's rites of passage. 
And I'm not going to, and granted, like I said, I don't mean any harm by this. But if we look at the sons that he's coaching and the sons that he's cultivating, not one of them matches his hue. Not one of them matches his skin tone. He's given our son something that they need to be successful in life. And he's not allowing color to be a barrier as to why he isn't doing what God put in him. Uh, I'm sorry, this is not that deep. <laughs> and, and when... And when I look at the life of Jesus, he was like, look, you see this farm? Somebody had to plant a seed. <laughs> and if they don't plant this seed, there's not going to be a harvest. So if we don't plant seeds in our daughters, if we don't plant seeds in our sons, and then we wonder why we keep getting what we always got. And then they want to come back to me saying, God, fix it. So I'm wrapping this up now, right? Our objective is not to be oblivious to obstacles. Like, for example, um, uh, somebody asked me one time, uh, hey, how you doing? And I would typically say, all is well. No, I didn't. I, or I would say something like, I'm blessed and this, that, and other. And, and I was like, you know what? I'm really not feeling that well right now. Yeah, I was like, I... I can't do it right now. I know I rehearsed this. <laughs> you, you know how you're going to answer the phone. Every t but, but it's like, you know what? I'm tired of rehearsing. Because if somebody's going to be able to pray for me and intercede on my behalf, and I keep lying to them, they ain't never going to know what to pray for. Lying to the pastor, oh, everything's straight, everything's straight, everything's straight. Pastor, I need a divorce. Well, you told me everything was straight. <laughs> everything's straight, everything's straight. Foreclosing on the home. Everything, everything's straight, everything's good, everything's all right. Car repossessed. And I believe when we come to worship, it's an opportunity for preventative help. Preventative health, knowing that the power of God is still at work. But those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. But then if we come in here and we worship in spirit and lies, all we got was a pep talk. But when we come in with spirit and in truth, then we got something to work with, and that's called resurrection power. Because our God is able to resurrect and bring life back into where dead areas are. Can somebody say amen? Yeah. Um, in Luke 9, 23, he says, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves, take up their cross daily, and follow me. Uh, this faith ain't for the faint at heart. Uh, meaning that this faith requires due diligence, right? And uh, I was watching a, 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 a series called The Resurrection of, of a Trugal. Uh, it's on Netflix. It's, it's Arabic, and it's really dealing with the Muslim culture. And it's the Turks, uh, the Ottoman Empire, and its uh, infancy. And, um, and basically, Shulman Shah was one of the uh, key characters in the entire series, right? And within this character, he's considered a righteous man because he doesn't make decisions off of impulse, right? And his values is kind of what gets him in trouble because his values are based on his religion. So therefore, he refused to be manipulated. He refused to be bought. He refused to compromise his faith according to the faith that he agreed to. Amen, somebody. So watch this. And then what happened was after a battle, he was not wounded or scarred. He was on his horse, and then he died. And then when he died, 
They buried him right where he died, and then they started season two. Then they started, don't let me go to power. <laughs> so what happened was, y'all know power come on on Sundays. Ghost, power book two. <laughs> but ghost is dead. But they done moved on to, you're right, there you go, Deacon Barker. There you, there you, <laughs> but going, going back. <laughs> They moved on to season two. And they're okay with that. But we're caught with season one in our life and we can't move on. We're stuck in childhood trauma. But movie director said, listen, in order for me to keep you engaged, I got to move on. But you got to be willing to move on as well. And God has a brand new script for you. Paul said it like this, to live is Christ, to die is gain, to be absent in the body means to be present with the Lord. And all I'm asking is that when I die, I just need one of these young men or young, one of these young women to pick up the book and keep on preaching and take it to the next level. Listen, I can't speak for everybody in here, but... Uh, but uh, uh, we had a parade uh, 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 Monday for Martin Luther King, right? And, 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 and basically, uh, for those of you that may or may not know, uh, uh, my biological father is deceased. The guy that raised me, his name is Tommy Rayford. Uh, he had a stroke uh, uh, 14 years ago, right? But, but he was in a parade with us for two miles. And, and, and pastors, okay, if I can go down for just a second. And, and to put this in context, when I was nine years old, we moved from New York to Jacksonville into Arlington. We lived off of Wedgefield. It was roughly around two miles from where we lived on Wedgefield to Fort Caroline's YMCA. We would run two miles to go to the YMCA to play basketball. But then we would have to run back home after we got through playing basketball. So I would try to slow my father down when, when, when we would be running to the, to, the, to, the, to, the, to the gym because I knew that we still got to play basketball when we get there. And, 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 and I would say, Dad, 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 I got a cramp, Dad, I got a cramp, I got a cramp. I can't, I can't run right now because I'm trying to save my energy because I know we got to come back. And he kept running. <laughs> and I said, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm like, dad, 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 dad. I got a cramp, I got a cramp, I got a cramp. It's in my side, it hurts real bad. Oh my goodness. He just kept on running. So I'm like, Dad, Dad, it hurts real bad. It hurts real bad. I got to stop. I got to stop. And that's when he said, hold up. If you stop, it's still going to hurt. So you might as well keep on. So fast forward from 9 to 39. I'll be 40 in February. According to African culture, you're not qualified to be an elder until you're 40. I didn't make this up. You can read it in the Black, The Destruction of Black Civilization, written by Chancellor Williams. That's a part of rites of passage. Men, you're not qualified to be an elder until you're 40. The most powerful person within that kingdom is not the king. The most powerful person within that kingdom would be a Pastor Gundy. A Pastor Paul, First Lady, pa Lady McCullough. Those will be your council of elders. So fast forward 30 years later, my father had a stroke 14 years ago. So basically, my father's holding up a sign with one hand because his left hand, he's not able to open it out. 
And he makes it through the entire parade while his son is running from side to side, shaking hands, kissing babies with COVID. <laughs> well, it was my baby. I was kissing my baby. So every time I look back, I saw my father with, with his body, with, with, with his sign, making sure that I was like, Dad, we got cars. You can get in the car. He's like, no, nah, I got this. I got this. I got this. You keep doing what you're doing. You keep doing. I got you. You, you keep doing what you're doing. I, I, and all I'm saying is, is that if we want our community to change, we need our elders connected to our youth. We need our youth connected to our elders. Can these bones live again? Can somebody say yes? Yes, they can because they shall live and not die. Let's say it the Lord. Whose report shall you believe? I'm, I'm going to believe the report of the Lord if there's anybody in here. Can you please give our God some praise in this place? Hey! 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 Do I need you to help me out? Help me out! This is when we ring that bell. This is when we ring that bell, we say goodbye to trauma. This is when we ring that bell saying goodbye to depression. This is when we ring that bell goodbye to heartache. This is when we ring that goodbye to pain. Is there anybody in here who can give our God some praise? Can you put your left hand to your right hand? And church of us. Father and our God, there's someone here who needs you, and we're just trying to offer Christ to our brothers and to our sisters. They don't have to go through this frustration alone. They don't have to go through this temptation. They don't have to go through this desperation or anxiety of life. You will walk with them. You will talk with them, and you will tell them that they are your own. So we just come offering them. We, we say you can come as a candidate for baptism. You can come by letter. 
You can come by Christian Experience or you can come under Watch Care. But, 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 but you have to make that decision. If you want to live again, you want to have a life that's more prosperous than the life you currently live, you need to come and give your life to Christ. That's all we're saying to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Come on, choir, lift us up now. Come on, lift us up. We offer Christ to you. Oh, our brothers, we, 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 we offer Christ. Oh, our come on, come on. Pastor Paul to come and leave us in our prayer of offer and tithes. Father, we come now to bring our tithes and offerings, recognizing that you have made the greatest offering in giving us your son, not compromising your holiness and justice but extending mercy and grace and in the cross bringing these two together so that we can have a restored relationship with you. And so, Father, we bring these offerings not because we're trying to bribe you, not because we're trying to uh, make you do something for us, but we bring these offerings as thanks, as praise, as right worship that you are God and you are good and you are worthy of not only our time and our talents and our money, but our whole lives, every ounce of affection and attention is yours because you are God and you have made us your people. And so God, receive these gifts, receive these offerings, use them for your glory that others might know that you are the glorious God and come to faith and come into the family of God. So for Jesus' sake, for his great name, we pray this. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Ushers and deacons and trustees will come as we prepare for our offering. Uh, once again, I want to thank the Boy Scouts, the Girl Scouts, and the leaders and everybody for being here with us. I want to thank you all for being here with us today. warmed up a little bit out there, but it was chilly this morning. Chilly, chilly. <laughs> I want to thank Pastor Nix for his sermon. He never ceased to amaze me. The ability to make practical applications of what he's preaching about, that is a great gift that God has given him. I just be smiling and smiling. Come on, give him a hand. I'm not into that to the movie though. I, I, just, I didn't catch that one. Whistle, is that you back there? How you doing, my brother? You bring your horn with you? Go get it for me. Go and get it for me. I got something for you. Go and get, get, get your horn. All right, gotcha. Okay. What, the, the bottles? Okay, if you need hand sanitizer, there's some free bottles in the lobby. You know how that is, first come, first serve, but you can get them and take them with you. Uh, those vegetables that are in the, in the back back there, there are, there's a fresh cauliflower, fresh carrots. Uh, you're welcome after church to go in the back. They're in the refrigerator. They'll be back there and pass those out and take them with you. 
Oh, yes. Uh, because of the, the remodeling and everything back there, be careful because we don't want you falling and stumbling and things of that nature. Uh, the kitchen, all the new kitchen material will be delivered this week. It'll be coming in, so that's out of the way. You got a new walk-in type refrigerator. You got a new stove with a grill and on it and a and, uh, uh, and, and, and two uh, big two big door ovens and uh, you got two fire fryers one for the fish one for the chicken so a new hood coming in so they working on it I'd be glad because I'm tired of walking back there seeing all that mess For those who are watching us live, you can go on our cash app, they'll put it up for you. Or you can go on our offering online and give an offering to us right online. That'll show up to go on our website, go on there, you can uh, and give. We thank you for tuning in with us. We hope that you've been blessed by the word today, blessed by the worship today, blessed by the songs today. We certainly thank you for tuning in with us. One more thing, I'm hoping you'll be able to do it this week. That's what I'm trying for. Uh, all our additional equipment that we needed for inside the sanctuary has arrived. So you just got to come and install that. They still got to do the ceilings and all of that. So we're working on it. So just hold on. It's all coming. May we stand in the presence of the Lord now. You preached it, you might as well close it. One of the best ways you could ever tell someone thank you for a message is how you apply it to your everyday life. Um, now, I don't sing now, so if you want to lead that part, then I'll pray after that. pray that you bless our families, our loved ones, every home that is represented and present, and those who are online, those who are on the prayer call. We just pray that you continue to be with them throughout the course of this week. Continue to cause the, the deaf angel to behave. Please allow your ministering angels to keep them encouraged, your warring angels to continue to fight on their behalf, and your Holy Spirit to continue to comfort their hearts. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Have a wonderful afternoon. Vegetables in the back, hand sanitation, sanitizers up front. Don't forget the home going service Tuesday at 10 a.m.